Hi, in this session I'm going to cover how to create a glass ball effect. What is a glass ball effect? Well, let me show you an example. Now here are some examples of a glass ball. Uh, we have this basically a sphere or a circle and you've got actually just two components and an, the circle and this oval shape. And there's just some color variations that make it look like it's a glass ball or like a marble. So where can you use these glass ball effects? Well, you can have these as small bullets instead of using the default bullet styles in PowerPoint. You can use these as bullets or you can just use these as other types of visual effects to add some color or some pizzazz to your presentation. So let me go ahead and show you how to create this glass ball effect. So let's go to a blank sheet over here. And as I mentioned previously, the glass ball effect, there's basically two objects. It's composed of two shapes. First is a circle, and the second is an oval. Let's go and create a circle shape. You notice here when we uh, go into our basic shapes, there's not a circle shape. There's this oval shape. And that's OK, because that's the one that we're going to use. And to create a perfect circle, when we click and drag it, we also have to press down the Shift key. So you press down the Shift key, and it's going to create a perfect circle for you. Now, if I didn't press down the Shift key and I use that shape, it's going to create an oval. It's going to, or it's going to, it's going to make it difficult you to create a uniform circle. So what you need to do is just press the Shift key, and you get your circle. So let me paint the circle a little bit large, and once we have the circle drawn, what we're going to do is right click it and go under Format Shape. And we want to have the line color reflect a solid line color with probably a white background, one darker 15%. Uh, this, is, this is the second square here. We don't want it too dark nor too light. Now some, the fill color, let's give it a nice, let's see, I think I think the green was kind of a nice fill color, so let's choose the green as our fill color. So now that we've got the green in there, that is our first shape. The second shape we're going to put in there is this oval shape. And that now you don't have to use to press down the shift key. We'll select the oval shape and we're just going to draw it in here. And we're just going to draw some initial size and we can play with it a little bit later. You'll notice one thing about PowerPoint 2010 is it provides a nice it provides a guide. See that dotted line? It provides a guide to help you helps you center it. So we have centered it vertically. Um, or you can center it. It tells you where you've centered it here. So this oval have centered in the middle of the circle. So that's one of the nice things about uh, PowerPoint 2010. Now as we put this oval in there, we're going to also right click and go into format shape and get rid of the line color. We don't need a line color here. And for the fill, we're going to have a gradient fill. Now the gradient fill, by default, it will give you two, let's see, two, three gradient stops. The first, second, and third. So the first at 0%, position 0. The second, position 50%, and the third at position 100%. And for the gradient fill, we're going to go with white. And make sure all these are white. OK. So at the, at the first position, the brightness, it wouldn't, doesn't really matter, because we're going to have that transparent. Whoops. And the reason why it's, it's like that is because it's flipped. So we want to make the direction go upward. Uh, let's see. Let's make the transparent. Let's make it. Uh, non-transparent, zero percent transparency first, and ooh, that's a little tough. Well, the angle that we actually want it is going to be 270, so that makes it a little bit easier. What happens now is when we increase the transparency, that's going to be the bottom part here. We're going to we can increase the transparency to 100 percent. That's going to give us a. That's going to let the green color bleed through. Now the second stop. We want to give the transparency probably around between 50 and 70 percent. You can play with it to see which one you like the most. Uh, I'll kind of stick with about 65 right now and see how that works out a little bit. And for the third position, 
you really don't need to have, let's see, we don't really need to have transparency. You might want to play with the brightness a little bit, have it a little bit more whiter or definitely not darker, but more whiter. So when we, when, once we close that, now we can kind of play with the size, the sizing of this and see if it makes it a little bit more pleasing to the eye, maybe shift it up a little bit. I use my arrow keys on my keyboard to shift it up a little bit. You can also use the, I believe it's the, press the control key and up and lets you fine tune it with the arrow keys on the keyboard and the movement. Otherwise it becomes pretty large movements. You can also press the control key and, it, let's see, I think it's better with the arrow key. Control arrow, it lets you move it a little bit. Maybe that's a little bit too big. So you can just do some fine tuning and adjust. Oops, it made two. So I pressed the control. Actually, I pressed the control key, and it made a duplicate once I used the mouse. So I'm gonna delete that. Oops, select it and delete it. Oops, select it and press delete. Delete. So what happened was when I pressed the control key and I clicked on the mouse and moved it, it created a duplicate of that object. Let me go ahead and delete that. Just so you know. So the control key is probably better with the mouse. Uh, well, let me select, I mean, not with the mouse, with the arrow. So let me move it up a little bit. Maybe move, increase this a little bit more. And let's put this into slideshow view and see how that looks. Yeah, so that's not bad. Now there's an example of the glass ball effect. Now once you create this, you c there, since there's two shapes in one, a good thing to think about doing is uh, selecting it, just right, cl left click and selecting it. You've, now we've selected both shapes and right click and group it. That way, when we adjust the size, oops, undo, that way when we move it around, it, it moves the whole thing. And also, it, it gives us the option of uh, changing the colors and duplicating the same thing. So when you wanted to increase or decrease the size and stay with the circle effect, just remember you should also press the shift key and if you wanted to decrease the size. But if you didn't press the shift key, um, it's going to it's gonna not keep the uniform circle circular shape. So let me undo, control C to undo. What That's what you can do there. Also, what you can do if you wanted to just make a duplicate of that, is select, select that and press control D. It'll make a duplicate and you can also select another color. So you see now the I've got the solid line around there. I'm going to give it another color, maybe orange. And so that's kind of an easy way to make duplicates and make a whole bunch of these glass ball effects without going through the whole steps again. So there you go. There's the glass ball effect. Hope that helps. Thanks for watching.